1 Samuel chapter 27. And David said in his heart, this is at the second time that David spared Saul. Two times Saul has repented, and the first time repentance meant no, without void, that he chased David again. I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. So David is in a condition here of helplessness, of hopelessness. He has forgotten that he's been anointed by God to be the king. And after Saul has deceived him twice, and I mean with the with the javelin, twice he's throwing it at David to kill him. One time he said, David, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, you're my son, and I won't do this again. And somebody says, Saul, David's over here. He gathers, what was it? I think it was 3,000, 4,000 troops. And David at the point right now is, you know what? After the repentance of Saul, he don't mean it. It's not true. That guy is going to come after me again. You know how close I've come to Saul? I ripped off his skirt. You know how close I came to Saul? I was at his pillow. Maybe the next time he'll come close to me. I spared his life twice. What will he do? If he comes that close to me. David's thinking of reaping and sowing. I've come to him twice. There's nothing better for me. And I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. Wow, look at that. Look what the fear has done. He's hurt. He's scared. And he's tired. And he's not thinking right. And he's not turning to God. I'm in, the, I'm in my land. I am been anointed to be king after Saul in this land. But I got to get out of here. Whoever I hang around... And Saul shall despair of me without hope. <laughs> you know, if, I, if he runs over the Philistines, I have no hope of getting him there. David, the Philistines are your enemy. You killed one of their giants. You have killed their men. You have taken 400 men of the foreskins to marry Michael. You're going to go run to people that hate you. You're going to go run to a bunch of people that are your enemy. And when you spoke to Goliath, they, you said that they are the enemy of God. And that's where you're going to go get your help from? Remember, Samuel's dead. Dave, David has a very small remnant of the priests that were not killed by Doag. And there is no point in saying, oh, David's weak, David's no, no, no. You would be in the same condition as David. Saul can muster the entire nation of Israel, 4,000, 5,000, maybe not more men to get this 601 men. And there are times you could live right and do right and hurt, scared, and tired. And he just got two victories. And Saul has not gotten him yet. David's gotten Saul. So shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and passed over with the 600 men that were with him unto Achish. He had 600 men before. I'm not getting any more people. No one else has come and joined me. None of the men that came with Saul, after they heard Saul again repent and say, David, oh, I love you. I'm not going to do this. Isn't, didn't he say that the first time, guys? No one's considered that Saul is wrong. Maybe we should go join David. I still got the 600 men. It's hopeless. That were with him unto Achish, the son of Mark, king of Gath. Now let's go back to 21.10. Chapter 21.10. 1 Samuel 21.10. At least go to Moab where his mom and dad were. 21.10. <laughs> 
And David rose and fled that day for fear of Saul. Oh, so this has happened before. And went to Achish, the king of Gath. You remember who was from Gath? Goliath. Is David still holding that Goliath sword? Because that was early in this chapter. But, and the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Well, kind of, approximately, but he had been anointed. Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David has sent ten thousand? Well, yeah, they sang it, but David killed the giant, and we don't know how many Philistines. David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid, and Achish the king of Gath. He changed his behavior before them, and feigned pretend, Hollywood actor, skit writer, himself mad in the hands. He wasn't mad, but he pretended to be mad. And blah, 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 that kind of mad. And scribbled on the doors of the gates, you know, scraped, scratched like a dog. And let his spittle, his spit, fall down upon his beard. So he's... <laughs> That's not David. He's pretending. He's in trouble. Saw on this side. On the east side is going to get me. Now I'm on the west side. And Gath. The people of Gath. Achish is going to get me. The Philistines. If I pretend to be mad. They'll leave me alone. Then said Achish unto his servants. Lo. He see the man is mad. It worked. <laughs> David was convincing. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman? So this date is 1062. And I, I don't know how good these dates are. And according to the date here, two years later. I don't know. Guy had more sense of dates than I do. If he's wrong, he's wrong. And so. Verse 2, he goes to Achish, the son of Micah, king of Gath. That's the guy you just played mad for. That's the guy you scribbled on the doors. That's the guy you let your spit run down. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Here's a guy, I don't want this madman, and here he is. He and his men. Every man with his household. So the 600 men, if they had husbands and wives, if they had children, all they came. And they are now in the Philistine area. Israel men are in the enemy. Even David with his two wives, Ahinamim, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, there's sweet Abigail, the Carmitis, that's the first time that word shows up, Carmitis. Some of those kind of words I will because they're important. Nabal's wife. Now that's kind of interesting. Because Nabal died, left her as a widow. And the Bible does say a widow can marry. And yet we get that little side note, Nabal's wife. The fool. She married a fool and that title sticks with her. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath. And he sought no more again for him. So you see the fear of David. Or the fact that all right, he's over in the Philistines. I ain't going to go mess with them. But we're also looking at the fact. Is that God's going to use this. To protect David. So when Saul dies. No one can say it was David that did it. And when we. God is able to bless. When we do wrong. Not all the time. David's in the wrong. And David said to Achish. If I have now found grace in thy eye. Let them give me a place. In some town in the country. That I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in a royal city with thee? Alright so David is in the capital city. Of Gath. In the house of the king of Gath. In the palace. He says, you know what? This is not where I belong. At this moment, he should say, you know what? I need to go back home. You know another man that sat in the palace? Young man. 
and said one day, you know what? I don't need to be here. Moses. And Moses went down and checked out his people. And from that point, God began to use him. David, I'll just take another dwelling in Philistine area. Now, how we know this is wrong, we'll see as we continue this chapter. And Achis gave him Ziglag this, that day. Wherefore, Ziglag pertains unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And that's a border between the Philistine and Judah and Simeon. And here's another title deed in the Bible that says David got this from the king of Gath, Achish. So if it would ever to be the Philistines say, hey, that's our city. No, 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 no. Here's the record. Your king gave me that. And the Bible records such title deeds. Such as the title deed that Abram bought, or Abraham bought a burial ground with a cave and trees for his wife Sarah. David will purchase the Temple Mount. Later on, we will read. Jeremiah is told, even in the captivity of going to Babylon, I want you to go to your uncle and I want you to buy this piece of land and I want you to put it in the ground as evidence. Throughout the King James 1611 Bible, the Geneva Bible, and the works of the Jewish people, no fact what the Middle East says, no fact what the United Nations say, no fact what the, the Philistines say, no fact what the Iraqis say, or the presidents or the queens God has recorded the title deeds of that land and it says it belongs to the Jew by the word of God by the voice of God as much as the Bible God says I have given that land to them and there are places in the Bible recorded you better not mess with it I don't check modern Bibles on that it says that land is there written in black and white You can call the Bible in a courtroom and the Bible will stand in the courtroom against a righteous judge. Not a not a, a filthy judge. A righteous judge with you know what? Yeah. That would believe God and say, Yep. Ziglag belongs to David. Uh first Samuel twenty seven. I'm at the whole chapter. God through the Holy Spirit inspired to wrote that down. And Gagish gave him Ziklag and pertains to the kings of Judah today. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. Now that's important. What's it important about? I don't know. Okay. How long did Jesus, Joseph, and Mary spend in Bethlehem? I don't know. And how long they spend in Egypt? I don't know. And yet we are told about David in a foreign land, not in his land, a year and four months. What is that? And it says a full year. A full lunar, lunar calendar year and add four months to that. What is that? I don't know. There's something to it. So, and David and his men went up and invaded the Gershonites. And if you look up that in commentary, they're really nobody. No one even knows who they are. And the Gerizites, same thing. They're mentioned in Judges 1.29. And the Amalekites, I thought Saul was supposed to get rid of them. You see the incomplete obedience of Saul? There is, they were supposed to have been wiped out by... Saul. So, evidently, they left more than just the king. And Samuel hacked him in pieces, if you remember. For those nations were of old, and inhabitants of the land. Of what? The Philistine area. Run that back to Genesis chapter 10, with the, the nations of people. The inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to shore, even to the land of Egypt. You're going to Shur, to Egypt. Genesis 16, 7. Someone else went there. See where we are. There's another group of family there. 16, 7. It 
Genesis 16, 7. In 16, 7, the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he said, Hagar, oh, who's Hagar? That's the mother of Ishmael. Sure, that's interesting. Another place. I just saw it here. Oh, she's on the run again. Where is she? Oh, where is she? Uh, chapter 21. Genesis 21. And it said, we'll start in verse 14. Genesis 21, 14. Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water, not wine. Is that interesting? And gave it to Hagar. Ooh, and put it on her shoulders and the child, that's Ishmael, sent her away and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. That's down south. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child on the shrubs and the angel meets her. Let's go to verse number 22. I mean, 20. Verse 20. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. So she went back to Egypt and got Ishmael, a bride, a Abrahamic, Abrahamic, Egyptian wife, because he was not Abraham when Israel was born. And where is all this taking place? Well, right here, where David spent a year and four months. On the way to shore. And this would probably be the area, too, that a little baby, his adopted father, and his mother, who had other children... <laughs> Would probably have taken him to go in Egypt. That baby would have been Jesus. Now, where would there have been signs? David was here. I don't know. And David smote the land and left neither man or woman alive. That kills the Amalekites. That's something that God wanted done. And you know, the Gerzites and the Gershites. He didn't leave nobody. Saul left the king in the bed and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel and returned and came to Achish. Now there was no order of God for David to do that. He killed every man, but he took the spoil. Notice how the sheep are mentioned first. David was a shepherd. And Achish said, the king of the Philistines, whether have ye made road, that's the only place that's in the Bible, road, today. It's a travel. Where'd you go? So what do we get the expression? We're on the road. Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. And David said, now watch this lie. Against the south of Judah. Who's Judah? Jews. That's his people against the south of the Jeharamites, against the south of the Kenites. Who's the Kenites? That's Moses' kin. That is the family of Moses' wife. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to get. That's not where David went. What is the lie? Achish, I went and killed a bunch of Jews. Our enemy. We went into Judah and killed. Why did he kill everybody? Do you see what David did? And these people were probably were allies of the Philistines. He is hurt. He is scared. He is tired. 
He's on the run. He's not making proper thought. And now he's lying. Because that moment he kills these people, he would have been an enemy definitely to Achan. You know what a man does when he fears? He'll lie. That's one of the top five things they say about a man that will fear. First top five, one of them will be he lies. And David saved neither men nor women alive, verse 9, to bring tidings to Gath, saying, least they should tell on us. So David doesn't want them to know, saying, so did David, and so will be his manner all the while he dwells in the country of the Philistines. What? He's killing Philistines. He's still doing it. But he went and told the king of Gath, Achan, I went into Judah and killed people. And Achish believed David, saying, He has made his people Israel, there you go, utterly to abhor him in the light of David's oath. Therefore he shall be my servant forever. David is in a mess. What a way to close the chapter. 